Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm just getting myself together here. Welcome, welcome, welcome uh, on a, what are we on, a Wednesday? Yeah, it's a Wednesday. <sighs> okay. Um, Mr. and Stitches, you can take us over to the craft table. Let's see here. I've got my mitered granny squares, my extra large mitered granny squares that we started working on on Friday. I've got my yarn needle, my hook, same one I was using. It's a six millimeter, it's a J, it's a little larger than I usually use. My scissors, my measuring tape, I've got my orange yarn here. I'm gonna explain that in a second. And I've got a little drawing also I will explain. Welcome. We thought we would have a little uh, live stream this afternoon. I'm going to join my granny squares together. So if you were here on Friday, um, I started working on these extra large mitered granny squares. I said I was going to make four. I was going to turn them into a little lap blanket. And over the course of the weekend, I had all these really fun ideas occurring to me as I worked on the squares. This is so typical of me. I'll start out with a project in mind. And partway through the entire mental design changes, I would love to know in the chat if this happens to you too. So if you just start out on a little project and you have one vision in mind, does it usually wind up looking the way it started out in your head or does it change midway through? Anyway, <laughs> let us know. I'm going to join my granny squares today. So I'm not going to work on the rest of the blanket. We're actually going to do that on Friday. So today we're just going to join the squares and I'm going to use the zigzag join. This is something new here on the channel. I've used this in the past, but we've never done a tutorial on it. So we thought we would do a nice slow uh, crochet along style tutorial as I join these big squares together using the zigzag and talk a little bit about how you can use it how you might want to augment it, and some of some best practices. So welcome. Thanks so much for spending some time with us today. This will probably be about an hour long live stream. Um, so it's not too big a bite to chew, <laughs> especially if you want to come back and watch it later. And uh, here we go. Okay. I'm joining together four granny squares today. Uh, but you can use this technique. Yes, the Mr. Camera is doing a lot of shaking. Is it? I'm trying to figure out why. Oh, Mr. and Stitches is here to help me it's out. Just, I don't know. It's shaking more than usual. Oh. So it's uh well, well, it's not like too much coffee and your eyeballs are maybe vibrating. Maybe it's my eyeballs. <laughs> Hello everyone. Um, I'd like to shout out Bob for sending us a super chat. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for the super chat. All right, if uh, it, would anyone like to let us know if you see vibration or if it looks bouncy for some reason? I don't know. It could just be on our end, but um, hi, hi, everybody. <laughs> um, okay, so while everyone is reviewing the view and let us know if it looks bumpy or wiggly, Mr. and Stitches might just have too much caffeine in his system. Entirely possible. You can use the zigzag join method on any kind of granny square. You can use them on solid double crochet squares, fancy granny squares, mitered, regular. If it's a square, it'll it'll work just fine with the zigzag join stitch. You can also use the zigzag join stitch on granny rectangles, long strips like our mighty mile a minute uh, strips. And you can also use it on uh, long strips of fabric. So for example, if you're crocheting big strips back and forth of say, Fair Isle style strips that you're not sort of joining the whole blanket as you go, but you want to join strips together later. Anything basically square or rectangle will work with the zigzag join. Now, I only have four squares. So today you're going to see basically, like if I cover up, <laughs> if I cover up some of my squares, I'm joining four together like this. But I wanted to draw a little just diagram and explain that you can use a zigzag stitch on any number of joined up squares. So whether it's three by four, four by five, 267 by 384, doesn't matter. If you're doing it in long strips where you have straight grid lines. So this is the key part. That's why I say squares, rectangles, or even long strips work just fine with this, this join method. You need long grid lines in order to work that stitch. So I will be joining four, but it would work just the same if I was joining 
what have I got here? 12, 20, doesn't matter. But I wanted to sort of just show that to you so you have it in your head that this is how it works. You need long, straight lines in between your modular pieces if you're going to use this join. Okay. I'm also going to use my bright orange. This is for a couple of reasons. One, I really like how the zigzag stripe or the zigzag join looks. It's a neat visual um, accent, but you could also use the same color that you bordered all your squares in, and it would still create a really cool textured um, visual effect. It would just be a lot more subtle because it would be blending in with the rest of the, the join borders or the rest of the borders on the squares. But I want it to really stand out. So I'm going to use orange. It's also the first color that is the sort of the main part or the focal point of my mitered granny squares. And I like that for a design effect. So I'm going to use my orange. I don't really need my measuring tape, but I had it out here. Um, just for, for reference sake, these are 39 centimeters or almost 16 inch squares. They will be 16 inches when they're joined together and they're blocked. They're big granny squares. Pair of scissors, my yarn needle, and when you join your squares together with the zigzag method, you want to make sure you're using the same sized hook that you used to put the squares together in the first place. That's because you want to mimic the same tension. So here we go. I'm going to get my orange yarn slightly pulled out here. Get that ready, hook to the side. When you join your squares using the zigzag, you want to have decided ahead of time how you're going to join them together. So for me, I'm going to have all of my orange focal points meeting in the middle. So I'm just gonna sort of quickly show you that. I don't have a whole ton of room here, um, but you'll get the idea. And then I will work on them a little bit at a time. There we go. All right. So this is how I'm going to join my squares. Now, once again, I'm going to pull out my little diagram. You want to make sure you lay out all of your squares before you decide um, if you're going to use the zigzag, because you're going to do the whole rows at a time, as opposed to when you're joining squares in a modular way. In, in the past, I've said, you know, you're going to single crochet or slip stitch or whip stitch or ladder stitch. You do you know, all of the squares in a single row, and then another row, and then another row, another row, and then you take all those rows of joint squares and you join them together. So you would do these individual uh, seams first in each row, and then you'd put the rows together and do these seams. Well, the difference with the zigzag is that you can just work all the way across. You can start at the bottom and go all the way to the top. You can start at the top, go all the way down the bottom, or from all the way to the side. And you can just join them all together without doing individual squares sort of two at a time. So I kind of like that. It speeds things up, but it does help to work on a flat space because they're going to want to move around on you. I'm going to do, so if I'm looking at my four squares, these are the four squares that I'm joining. I'm going to do this seam first. So let me just flip this over so we're not going to confuse ourselves. I'll draw a secondary graph. So this is today's graph. I have four squares that I'm working with. There we go. Here's my little layout. I know that the focal point of my mitered granny squares are all going to be in the middle. So this is my layout for my extra large mitered granny square blanket. My focal points all sit with the corners touching. And I am going to zigzag join this entire line here. So I'll join these two squares and then keep going and join these two squares. So these guys are going to want to wiggle because this these seams won't be closed in yet. But I want to do this whole seam first and then I'm going to do that seam afterwards. So here we go. I'm going to look at my layout. I know I'm starting from the bottom. So I'm just going to move these guys up so that I don't interrupt the layout and get ready to join my yarn. I'm at the bottom of the middle seam. I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook. 
I'm going to join my yarn down here in the bottom corner. Now I'm right-handed, so I find starting down in the bottom left corner to be comfortable. I could technically start in the bottom right corner because actually it doesn't really matter if you're left or right-handed because you're kind of working vertically. Um, but I'm just gonna start down here in the bottom left corner, join with a slip stitch, and I'm gonna chain one. So there is a slip stitch around the bottom corner space of my first mitered granny square, and I've chained one. Now I'm gonna look over here. Here is the bottom corner space of my next square. This is the stitch right above that. So there's space, stitch, 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 space, stitch, 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 space, stitch, stitch, stitch. That's how the side of my square is built. So I'm always going to be looking at the next thing. So the spaces and the stitches are all represented by the same little traveling stitch across the top. So whether it's a chain or a stitch, it's got the same sort of like daisy chain look across the top. I do not want to join in the corner opposite. I want to look at the stitch next to it. So it's the stitch just above that. I slip my hook through that, tighten up my yarn and slip stitch. Chain one. Back to the other square. Here's where I joined. Here's the stitch above that but I just did this stitch on the opposite side, so I wanna skip that one and go to the stitch above that. Slip my hook in, make sure that I don't get my yarn in the wrong place. So skip a stitch, find the next one, and slip stitch. Chain one, go to the other side. There's the next stitch, but I just did that one on the other side. I'm gonna skip it, I'm gonna to go to the next one. And that is it right here. So. Slip my hook through that. That's the actual join, so it's a little bit confusing. Slip stitch and chain one. Back to the other side. There's the next stitch. I skip it. I go to the next one, which is actually a space. Make sure my yarn is out of the way. Slip stitch, chain one. Back to the other side. Next stitch, I skip it. There's the one above it. Slip stitch and chain one. So the chain one is giving you a bit of movement. And this is how that zigzag looks. So you've got this almost kind of lacy effect happening. It mimics gently the spaces along your granny squares. And when you kind of pull out and look at it, you've got like this fun little. I mean, there's what other what other words do you call it? There's a little zigzag effect happening. So if you are a bit messy or you know you have trouble with your tension, this is a fun one to join your granny squares with. First of all, it's quick because you're crocheting, so there's it's not sewing. It's pretty forgivable, and then it looks kind of neat because you're just skipping. So every other stitch. So when you go back to the so you chain one in between squares. You skip the stitch that's not used next to the place you just crocheted and then go into the next one. So it's every other stitch as you move between squares. And this, this just creates such a cute look. Now, can you all see that pretty clearly? I'm gonna hold it up just a little bit. And this pretty little join, now again, you can do this all in the same color as your border. It will still be a neat visual look, but it will blend in with your border, the border color of your squares. So if you don't want to make a big deal of the join on your squares, then go with the same color you bordered all your squares on. But I'm using this bright orange as sort of a di design or a style choice because I like so much the color and I want to sort of pull out the focal point of the square. So I'm joining with it. And I, I think that looks really kind of neat. Oops, I skipped two. Don't want to do that. There's one. Here's the next one. So I'm going to do this all the way along. There's one. There's the next one. There's one. There's the next one. 
So always chain one in between squares. That just gives it a bit of breathing room. And then you're slip stitching through the, not the immediate next stitch that you already slip stitched into, you're skipping that one and you're going on to the next. So it's every other stitch that you're slip stitching into. And I'm just gonna move it down a little bit. Hello, hello, if you're just joining us, thanks for popping in on a Wednesday afternoon as we do a little live tutorial here. So this is all pretty straightforward until you get up to the top, which I am nearing. It's kind of fun to work um, vertically. <laughs> I find it helps to do that because you wanna keep your yarn to the top so that it doesn't sort of get caught underneath your um, your stitching. I'm just going to roll my blanket up a little bit as I go. And if you are zipping along and you realize all of a sudden that you've, you know, maybe you've skipped the wrong stitch or you've used the wrong stitch or something at some point, don't worry about it. Just cheat yourself back up to where you think you should be and keep going. Uh, it's another reason I like this join. It's quite forgiving. So I've gotten all the way back up to the top. And now I'm going to just keep on going. So I bring down the next two. And I'm going to continue. This is the same seam. So I'm going to continue up between the two, the next, the middle of the next two. So I'm going to chain one. And I don't want the space, I want the stitch above it. Uh, because it would be the next stitch. And then you sort of skip one. And then I don't want this space or the next stitch. I want the one just above that. So I'm going to pretend like um, like I've been kind of going back and forth this whole time, like these two seams aren't there. Now, this is why I say working on a flat surface is helpful, because this is going to get wiggly. You're going to have like a lot of flapping <laughs> going on. So it helps to work on a flat space just so you can kind of move your blanket along as you work. And then you just continue. Make sure you chain one in between your squares. You're using every other stitch to slip stitch into. And I'm paying very close attention to what I'm doing here, gang. So I can't quite see the chat today, but I know you're there. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, what would you call this stitch? This is the zigzag join. Zigzag join. Yes. Quite literally, it zigzags and it joins your squares together. So <laughs> I think that's a pretty, it's a pretty, it's a pretty accurate title. Yeah. <laughs> I've used this before. Um, to join other projects. And I just think it's so cute, but it's one of those nifty little things that I forget exists. And then I go off and I join squares the way I usually do. Ho hum, boring. And I just realized that since this is such a unique looking blanket and I'm really just having fun with it, um, I thought I would bring back my little, uh, this little zigzag thing 
the zigzag join because I thought it would look really cute here and I like the way it's happening. So that was the plan. Like I said, if you get the odd, if you get sort of miss the, the if you get the, the odd wrong stitch, don't worry about it. It won't show. The nice thing about this zigzag um, join is that with the added little chain in between the squares, you're giving it uh, breath to move. You're giving it room to breathe, I guess I should say. Um, but the whole thing will be bordered, which gives it stability, and it's going to zigzag join going the other way. So for smaller afghans, this is a nice choice. Um, if you use a really thick yarn, I'm using the yarn I'm using to join it is a size three weight. And some of the yarns in these squares are a size four weight. So depending on the weight of the yarn you use, it's going to change the look of the zigzag stitch as well. So I highly recommend grabbing a couple of, of uh, granny squares out of your pile of, of stash grannies and doing a little bit of experimenting. Try different hook sizes, try different um, yarn weights. It's a, it's a really fun little technique and it can get, it can sort of really change how it looks depending on how you, you um, what kind of yarns or hooks you use. I'm just sort of rolling up the blanket as I go, just so I can kind of keep some semblance of control <laughs> over it. Okay, I'm nearing the top. So when you get up to the top, you're going to finish by wherever your last stitch ends, whichever, whichever side is closest to the top, and then chain one and end in the other corner. If it winds up being the corner and you still haven't joined the other one, just join in the corner, chain one, and join in the other corner. So it won't it won't change the look of the Zigzag, the stitch count does not matter. What you're doing is just putting together your two granny squares, and then you have this really cute zigzag look. And I'm going to hold this up a little bit so you can sort of see it. We'll take some photographs and post them a little bit later in the uh, community post and on the, on the community tab area so you can kind of get a better, clear look at how it looks. But it is such a fun little zigzag. And like I said, it will really change its look depending on what color you use, the weight of the yarn, and the size of the hook. So when you're done, you've done an entire seam. So I've done this entire seam, but whether you're making a big blanket or not, once you've done the entire seam, no matter what direction you're going, you're at the top, you just fasten off like you normally would with any other kind of project. So yarn over, pull it back through your little hook, uh, your loop, pull it nice and tight. And then you can leave that tail, you can weave it in later. Very carefully unroll your blanket. Now, if you were doing, I like to do all the, like the, the all the, the long, like I like to do all the seams that go in one direction um, at the same time. So if I, I started here, I will do this one. And if I had more, I will do all of the long, like top to bottom seams. Or if I started going left to right, I would do all the left to right seams before I started on the top to bottom seams. I just find that kind of helps keep things look neat and tidy. Um, but because I'm only joining four, I only have one top to bottom seam to do, and now I have one side to side seam to do. So I'm gonna very carefully spin my entire blanket around. And 
And now I'm going to do the whole thing all over again, starting down here at the bottom. So slip knot on hook. Big hello to everybody who's just joining us. This is sort of a quick little live today. Wanted to sort of bring you all up to speed on my current crazy blanket and how I decided to, to join all of my squares. The zigzag join is really fast. It's really easy. It's very beginner friendly. I recommend you give it a go. Um, it always looks good. <laughs> and even if you get the wrong stitch or you skip a stitch or something, it'll still look like a zigzag and it gives you a blanket room to maneuver. So if you find that your blankets look tight or your squares are really tight and you're worried about a join, uh, like you don't want to sew them together because you feel like that's going to create tight puckering, then you might want to go with the zigzag join. So I've joined in the bottom corner. I've chained one. I'm looking at my neighboring square. I do not want the corner. I want the stitch just above that. So <clears throat> you're, <clears throat> excuse me, you're alternating. Holy cow. <laughs> Pardon me. You're alternating where you where you anchor your stitches. So here's one. It's like you're walking. You're walking up the seam of your blanket. So step here, step a little up, a little up, a little up as you kind of go across. So you're you're not anchoring it in the stitch directly opposite. You're sort of always going to this next stitch up. And that's probably a good way to think about it. It'll kind of help keep you um, in the right in the right stitch as you work. So I want this one here. And then up here, remembering to chain one in between squares. And then you just relax and enjoy the crochet. Okay. I like to pause every once in a while if I think of it and make sure that I'm eh, roughly in the right place. As long as my zigzag looks like a walking stitch, so it's walking up the seam of the blanket, then I know I'm doing the right thing. Don't want to skip too many. Okay. Oh, this is so cute. I really like how that orange is uh, the focal point of the square is already bright and cheerful, but now this join is just bringing more attention to that lovely orange focal point. start rolling it up now as I go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome everybody. Welcome new members. Welcome returning members. <laughs> welcome subscribers. Welcome to the show. It's uh, just a lovely little Wednesday afternoon here in the craft room. I'm happy that you guys could make it. Someone was asking earlier um, the stitch count. Can you repeat uh, your stitch count as you're doing the zigzag? Yeah, so the a stitch count, such as it is, is every other stitch. So let's say you've got three stitches here and you've got three stitches on the other side. One, two, three. You join your yarn in stitch number one of your first square. Right opposite it, you've got, you've got, so your stitches are evenly matched sitting each across. You're going to chain one from stitch number one and you're going to go to stitch number two on the other side. Chain one, and you're going to go to stitch number three on this side. Chain one, four. Chain one, five. So you're going, you're walking. Um, I can also draw it out again. This is why it's helpful to have a little, little piece of paper. So let's say you've got, I'm just going to use dots to indicate stitches. So you've got 
equal sets of stitches sitting opposite each other with your granny squares. Let's say you join your yarn here. You're going to chain one and then slip stitch into stitch number two on the other square. Chain one and then slip stitch into chain number three or stitch number three on the first square. Chain one and join with a slip stitch to stitch number four on the other square. So you're chaining one in between squares and then you're constantly working in a zigzag zigzag format. So square one, stitch one, square two, stitch two, square one, stitch three, square one, stitch four, or square two, stitch four, square one, stitch five, square two, stitch six, etc. And you're always chaining one in between slip stitches. And that's what gets you this, this fun little zigzag pattern. I will do a quick fix short video on this stitch pattern, on this little sort of join, just so you can see it a little closer up in a more succinct way. But I thought you guys might like to sort of just see the, the long form version of this as I put it together. Because sometimes it's very helpful to see um, something happening sort of scaled up in real time over a longer seam, as opposed to just sort of being given the, the quick, yeah, here's how you do it. You know, here's what it'll look like and it's done, you know. <laughs> So this is not what I would consider, uh, a, this joint is not as strong as whip stitching, single crocheting, or slip stitching into every single stitch. Um, it is a perfectly fine join for large blankets because you're, uh, you're evenly disp dispersing the weight of the squares and the overall blanket. So the aggregate weight of the blanket is evenly dispersed over those long seams. So it's still, uh, it's still a strong join. It's just not as strong as single crocheting, slip stitching, or sewing into every matched pair of stitches. So if you're putting together a blanket and you want absolutely no space in between join stitches, you sew, single crochet, or slip stitch together every single matched pair of stitches along a seam. But if you want something a little more lacy, a little more open, a little more interesting, you want to play with design, this is still a very strong join and it'll work on blankets of any size. Um, but uh, it's going to have little spaces in between. So, for example, if you're doing a join as you go, if you've ever done join as you go granny squares, you know that there's little spaces in between as you join as you go, but that's still a strong join. So it's it's up there with that same kind of tensile strength. Good question. Give myself a little more slack. And the right hook to use is the same hook you use to make all of your granny squares with. So I used a hook a uh, size six millimeter for my granny squares. I'm using the exact same hook size to join them all together because I want the same tension and the same stitch size. So for me, it's, it's a visual. If you have trouble with tension and your tension tends to be a little too tight, then obviously you want to go with a larger hook. If your tension is too loose, you want to go with a smaller hook. Now I'm getting up to that seam where the first zigzag went through like a steam drain. <laughs> and I'm just gonna keep on going like it's not even there. So I'm gonna work right over top of it. So I'm gonna make sure that my yarn is up here, chain one, and I'm into this. So I'm gonna work right over top of that seam. I'm acting like it's not even there. And that is what's going to create strength in that uh, corner, so in this intersection where the four squares meet, I've got one seam already going through it. Now I'm going through it the other way and I'm working right over top of that existing seam and that's gonna create strength in the intersection. And I'm gonna pretend like it wasn't even there. I'm gonna just look for the next stitch and keep going. Let's make sure I don't 
That would be the space. I don't want the space. I want this one. So just to sort of pull back for a second, there's the intersection. I've got the zigzag going through the middle of the blanket one direction, and now the zigzag goes through the blanket in the other direction. So down the road, if I felt like there was a little bit, like if I don't like this, like look, see, I've got a bit of a, a bit, bit more of a finger, finger spice there. I can always take it back out and then readjust how I zigzag through that that um, that intersection. Like I said, if you miss a stitch, if you use too many stitches, um, you skip a stitch, you don't skip enough, you can always sort of fiddle with, um, you can fiddle with this. It's not gonna show because the zigzag is really, really friendly. So for example, I'm thinking I might actually treat both these spaces loosely as a single place Nope, I don't like that either. Okay. All squares are different. I am using um, a, oh, you know what? I'm going to do that. So I'm using a join yarn that's a lighter weight than some of the other weights in these squares. So another reason I like the zigzag join is that you can be flexible about where you anchor it. You know, I've gotten to this, this sort of intersection and I think, well, maybe I'm going to change where I put the next stitch. I'm going to just put this one. I'm going to actually, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to sneak an extra stitch in, then I'm going to hop across and keep going. Let's see how that looks. Hmm? Nope. Join. Everyone's really enjoying this stitch. Good. I, I love this. I think it's really cool. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to use the actual seam. So around the seam, there's a stitch here. Around the seam, I'm going to actually create the stitch. So let me, don't forget to chain one. I'm going to slip stitch into the actual seam from going in the other direction, chain one, and now into the corner space of my next square, and then into this next stitch and so on. So let me get a few stitches in. We'll pull back and we'll see what that one looks like. Like I said, you can fiddle with your this stitch until your heart's content. Make those intersections look exactly the way you want. It doesn't matter where you start and stop, where you put this, this stitch in, as long as you're making sure to get that, you're trying to get that walking effect. So one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. Making sure there's a chain one in between. Oh, I like this much better. Look at this. Okay, here's what I did. This will change depending on the blanket you're making. This is much better. I don't have a big gap anymore in the in the middle. I just have a regular gapping that just sort of is in, it's to scale with the rest of the zigzag. So the intersection doesn't look sort of off kilter or too holy anymore. So what I did is after I got and anchored my last zigzag stitch at the very edge of my first set of squares, so I finished that, I chained one, and instead of jumping across the seam into the next square, I actually used the seam itself. I put a zigzag anchoring stitch in the seam from having gone the other way, chained one, and then started all over again in the bottom corner bottom left corner of my next square, chained one, and then into, so this, I act, I treat the space as stitch number one, chain one, anchor in stitch number two, chain one, and anchor in stitch number three, chain one, anchor in stitch number four. And I, as I said at the beginning, I'm treating the spaces and the stitches all equally. So a space is spot one, and then so space, stitch, 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 space, stitch, 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 also translates to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm not differentiating between stitches that run across the tops of spaces or actual double crochets. They're all equal. 
they all get used and they all count as kind of like a, an anchoring position. So I like the way that turned out much better. I feel that's got more strength to it. I can pull it apart. I like the way it looks. There's kind of like a, an equalness there. So that is how I'm going to treat this intersection, depending on how, if I was doing any other sort of intersection. So for example, if I was doing a blanket with longer seams because there were more modular pieces in it, the next intersection I got to might act a little differently just depending on how this, the first seam went through it. So when you get up to each intersection, just slow down, work through it, stop, take a look at it, decide if you like the way it looks. If it didn't turn out quite the way you want it, take a couple stitches, back up and try it again. And uh, there are no rules here, no hard and fast rules. Just generally chain one between anchoring and try to keep that alternating step feel going all the way up the blanket. It's fun and it's fast. And uh, you know what? It beats sewing. So if you're not really in the mood to pick up a yarn needle and sew together all your stitches, and I'm not always in the mood to do that, this is fun. It's interesting. It's got kind of a unique look to it. Did I chain one? Yes, I did. I try to chain one after I slip stitch before I do anything. So I always, it's always slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch, chain one. Um, and I try to remember to do that if I'm going to put it down and reposition the blanket. I try to remember to always finish my slip stitch with a chain one, just so I don't forget to chain one if I have to put the thing down and come back to it. And then you just kind of get into a little bit of a rhythm. So I chained my one because I have to put this down. I'm going to roll it a little bit. I'm almost to the end of this seam. Katie wants you to know she said hi. Hey, Katie. Everyone would like to know how your hands are doing. Well, um, this was a good day for me. Thanks for asking about my hands, everybody. Um, this was a good day to do this. I'm a little bit sore, but I knew that doing the zigzag join wouldn't be um, too much of a strain. So, okay, how many how many pros am I up to on this zigzag join? That's another pro. The zigzag join is relatively easy. It's flexible. Um, you can control it by just doing one stitch at a time and then and then sort of tugging back on your tension if you have to. Um, if you, I recommend working on a flat surface so you can keep control of your squares, that also helps if you've got sort of like some uh, tendon issues, some inflammation issues, whatever your problems might be. And uh, it goes relatively quickly. So if you want to sit down and join together a, a great big granny square blanket and you're thinking, oh, it's going to take so long to do these seams. This is fast. I've just stitched together almost the entire blanket um, in a relatively short period of time. So I'm just going to make sure that my two joins at the end are in both the edges, just to make it a little stronger. Um, I will be adding a border, so any of the starts and stops of these seams will just disappear into the overall border. Fasten off. Pull it taut to make sure you've got a nice tight knot. And uh, there I go. I have joined my squares together. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Okay, I right away. I love the I love the echo of that sorbet orange running through the entire blanket. So instead of it just being part of the border, which it will figure prominently in, it also is kind of 
pulled through the blanket. So I've got this fun uh, focal point. It's like my four squares are all kind of like meeting in the middle. They're having a conversation. They're all kind of looking together. And I've got that lovely orange now running through the whole blanket. And it will be it will continue in the border, which we will be working on on Friday. Um, so there we go. That is the zigzag join. I've got my blanket joined. Boy, that took a lot less time than sewing it together or single crocheting or slip stitching through every single set. I like it. It mimics the join as you go effect. There's a little bit of like laciness kind of going on, but because it's it's chaining and slip stitching and you're using every other stitch as you sort of like work back and forth between the squares, it's actually a pretty strong join. So it might look lacy, but it's a lot stronger than a typical lace join. Um, highly recommend it. I would give it a try if you've got some granny squares lying around and you're not sure what to do with them. Uh, if there are any questions, I've got my eyeball on the chat now. So if you want to toss a few in about um, this particular uh, join, I'd be happy to try and answer them. Uh, like I said, I've been doing this particular join uh, for a long time. Um, many of you might have seen my um, multi blue square granny square blanket it's one i showcased years ago in our granny square original granny square tutorial at the end of the video we kind of went through some of our granny square blankets and that um multiple shades of blue um actually no not that one it's the it's the licorice all sort granny square blanket and that one is also in that video the licorice all, licorice all sorts granny square blanket i made is um, joined with a version of the zigzag stitch. It's the uh, slightly longer lacy version. It's all in black. Um, and it is, a lot of people have asked about it, but I've been using this particular join for a long time. So, um, I, yeah, Cherry asks, how do you continue after two rows of the granny square? So at the beginning, Cherry, I kind of mentioned that if you're joining um, you this work this join works best on squares, rectangles, or long strips. What you're looking for are long, straight running seams between your modular pieces. Doesn't matter how many squares you have, 12, 20, 400, doesn't matter. What you want to do is decide if you're going to work top to bottom first or side to side first. And then you do all you do all the long, long seams. So you've got you're working through, you lay down the entire blanket. All of your squares are in the position you want them to be when the whole thing is done. You lay them out on the floor, on your table, however you can best do it. And then you start at the bottom or you start at the side and you do that entire seam. So instead of doing the little short seams between sets of squares like we usually do, you're doing the whole thing. Now, this can become a bit cumbersome if you're dealing with lots of squares, which is why I say you want to work on a flat surface. And it works really, really well when you're only managing a few squares like these guys. Um, but you just keep doing, you do that seam, you do all the top to bottom seams first, or all the side to side seams, then you do all the top to bottoms or all the side to side. So if I started at the top at the bottom, I'm going to, I would do all the top to bottom seams, all of them, all the way across the blanket. And then I would come back and do all the side to side seams. And uh, that's it. That's all you have to do. I would not use this join method to put together a granny square bag unless you're going to line the bag and then you can do whatever you want because bags um, have stuff that kind of poke and it doesn't always hold things that are smooth or a single thing. Sometimes a lot of stuff rattling around in there. Uh, there's spaces in between the join. And um, so I would recommend uh, lining that bag if you're going to use the granny square. If you're If you're making a granny square bag, I recommend lining it anyway, <laughs> uh, because the granny squares have spaces in them. But um, especially if you're going to use like a lacy join like this zigzag stitch, definitely line it. If you're not going to line it and it's just because you want to toss like, you know, a, a sweater into it or something cute, um, that's fine. But just remember that it's lacy. So if you are going to actually treat it like a bag and you're going to have little things in it, um, you have to line that bag, but uh, it would be strong enough for that. Yes. And somebody I just I saw wants to see the back. Here's what the back looks like. Really pretty. I'm going to hold it very, very sort of carefully here so you can see it. 
there's just a little bit of that orange showing through to the back. And because we were slip stitching every other stitch as we walked along the uh, the seams of the in between the squares, you've got the, the little backside, the V part of the slip stitch showing. And we will take some photographs that are a little clearer and post them on the tab a little later today so you can see this uh, in a sharper image. And we will do a little short, quick tip video. So if you just need a quick refresher, we'll have that available for you this week as well. Can that work with a double crochet stitch blanket? Yes, it can work with a double crochet stitch blanket. Um, if your square, if you're putting together modular pieces that are square, rectangle, or strips, this stitch will work. What you want is to um, have stitches to join the actual, uh, to, to actually anchor your stitches in. So you can technically do this along the raw side of a, of a, um, a crocheted piece. So, you know, when I say raw side, I mean, like if you're crocheting, you know, like double crochet to one end, chain two, turn all the way back, chain two, turn all the way back. So if you're back and forth crocheting, you're going to have what I call the raw edges or the, so just the sides of the stitches running up both sides. And you can anchor this join around the sides of stitches or through stitches, of course, but it might not look as neat and tidy and it might take a little bit more time um, than if you're just joining um, actual tops of stitches together. Uh, but absolutely that will work. I recommend you play around with it a little bit. It's uh, <laughs> it's a fun stitch. It will change depending on what you use it with, depending on the hook size, the yarn weight you use, the color. Like if I joined all this in the same white yarn that I bordered all my squares with, you wouldn't be able to see it as clearly, but it would still have kind of a neat textured look when you looked at the blanket as a whole. So it is it is a cool method and I recommend you all play with it. Very beginner friendly. So if you're new to this, uh, just remember that you really can't screw it up. So that should calm your brains right there. <laughs> I know I love it when someone says, ah, it doesn't matter. Cheat in here, add an extra stitch. Who cares? It works. So uh, that's the nice thing about this join. Tammy would like me to tell you that you are awesome. Tammy wants me to know that I'm awesome. Thanks, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, golly. Well, guys, I'm glad you were able to pop in today. Um, I know this was a quick one, but that was the point. We just wanted to sort of bring you up to speed on the blanket, show you the join method. We will have a little quick tip technique tutorial for you later this week that just highlights the better parts of this so you can see it up close with a little more detail. We'll post a couple pictures on the community tab later today. And of course, you can always come back to this live stream later. Uh, if you tap or mouse over top of the video player itself, you'll see that red bar at the bottom with the little dot. Grab that dot. And you can fast forward or rewind all the way back and forth through that video. So if there's something you want to see again, or if there's something you want to get to, um, it's a great way to manipulate the video. I absolutely love that about YouTube videos. We can zip through it. We can rewind um, just by using that little dot. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the rest of your day. We will see you Friday. We're going to be live again on Friday. Uh, time to be announced to the family. We're not sure about the time yet. Um, but of course, uh, if you've got notifications turned on, we do always try to get the stream up and running about a half an hour before we go live. So you should get like a little notification that the stream will be starting. Um, and then you can just click on that little notify me later button and it'll notify you when we actually go live. And, um, uh, Tammy asks, will this be on Etsy? Uh, asks, will this be on Etsy? So this particular square pattern is already up on Etsy. It's our extra large miter granny square, uh, pattern. There are tips and some directions included in that pattern for uh, regular joining. So if you want to stitch them together, single crochet, slip stitch, or sew. And there's some border suggestions. Uh, but this particular join is not included in that pattern. So just in case you know you were thinking it might be part of the pattern, it's not. This is just a fun new technique we thought you might want to try out. Um, but these are granny squares. You can join them in so many different ways. And I just thought this would be a fun a fun example. Uh, so uh, if you're looking for specific directions on the zigzag join, um, we will try and, and we'll think about how we might explain that. That might be kind of an interesting concept for um, a pattern. But um, this particular join method sort of um, can be used for a lot of different projects. So I'm kind of hesitant to just sort of 
um, to just sort of include it in in a particular pattern, unless it was go uh, unless I was going for like the style overall. Uh, I wanted to try it with this square. I think I like the outlook. I like the outcome of it, and I especially wanted to use that bright orange in a way that was attractive. So I didn't really want to make a solid seam like the single crochet or the slip stitch like I've done in previous blankets. And I didn't think it would necessarily look right if I just sewed it together. I didn't. I didn't trust that my sewing would be neat and tidy. This is a lot more fun. So that's another fun thing about it. It's um, it zigzags. It doesn't. Every stitch doesn't have to be perfect, um, but you still get that kind of back and forth look. Um, okay, we're gonna cut it off there, guys. We will see you Friday. Have a wonderful evening. Have a great couple of days ahead. Stay safe. Stay crafty, and uh, we will see you in two days' time. Bye, everybody.